this problem is based on a cantilever beam which is subjected to a uniformly distributed load let's go through the description here we go uh, if you watch there is this cantilever beam which is carrying a udl whose magnitude is w per unit length so what does that mean we'll get to that over the entire span over the entire length you can see we need to determine the slope and deflection at the free end which happens to be point p now whenever you start any problem based on deflection of beam and especially where you are applying the method of conjugate beam you have to <coughs> move forward in a step wise manner what we'll do is number one we are going to make the bending moment diagram for the real beam that's the real beam for you okay and in order to convert this real beam into a conjugate beam there are certain modifications you need to make let's say you've made the bending moment diagram you then divide that bending moment diagram by ei and put it on top of rb and then you change the boundary conditions also rather reverse it the fixed f on end of the real beam will become the free end and free end will become the fixed end to it and then finally in step number 3 it's it's time to have some fun you just need to calculate the shear force and bending moment diagram for the conjugate beam which which indirectly gives you the value of slope and deflection for the real beam so step number 2 is essentially where you prepare your conjugate beam by changing the end conditions and then putting the m over t ai diagram onto the beam itself can we proceed i think we can and uh, <coughs> take a look first thing is you need to take some section over here i have taken this much chunk so i have taken the section from the right bending moment clockwise shear force upwards what are we interested in sir we are interested in making the bending moment diagram that is the m values at each and every point along the length of the beam since the beam is in equilibrium so summation of all the forces will be zero as well as moment will be zero you can see the moment will be zero about this section x x section okay and along this x x section the bending moment that we assumed is mx clockwise right now w per unit length the load is w per unit length that means in a distance or a length of 1 meter the load is going to be w that is 1 w so for 2 meters it is going to be 2 w similarly for 3 meters it is going to be 3 w summing this up let me tie this into a mathematical relationship where i can say that uh, for x meters x meters the load acting would be equal to x w okay 1 1 w 2 2 w this way x w or w x whatever it is so that load would be acting downwards right at the center of this small chunk w into x secondly this load will be at a distance of x over 2 from this section so again it's very simple what kind of effect it is going to have clockwise wx into x by 2 let me start with this mx it is clockwise at this very section okay so minus mx wx into x by 2 a clockwise moment again minus wx into x by 2 simplify this what you have is a beautiful relationship a sort of parabolic relationship okay if you keep on changing the value of x the bending moment will give you values in this fashion right and uh, let me just elaborate on this for x is equal to 0 this is the value for x is equal to what uh x is equal to l the value is going to be w into l square by 2 it, since it is negative it has been drawn in the below the origin you can say below the x axis you can see right so far so good okay now this over here is what is known as a parabolic spandrel how the centroid of such a figure is calculated because uh, you need to know the equivalent point load and where it would be acting for that let me take you to this illustration so far this is how you calculate the area and centroid for a rectangle bh p by 2 from here or from here triangle bh by 2 okay half base into height and this is b by 3 from over the right angle wherever the right angle is located and from there the distance is b by 
for a parabolic spandrel. I want all of you to remember this. <coughs> Area is BH over 3. In triangle BH by 2, here BH by 3. Location of centroid is 9 is at a distance of B by 4 from this 90 degree corner. Okay. Similarly, whenever you are dealing with a triangularly varying loads, this cubic spandrel will come into the picture. We'll get to that later on. Now, let me get back to the problem. So, this is where we've reached. Okay. WL square by 2 when divided by EI in step number 2. Divide by EI put it on top of the real beam and change the end condition. What? Change the end conditions which means fix becomes free and free becomes fix. WL square by 2 EI. Wonderful. You can see this fix became free and this free became fixed. Done. <coughs> you know the area. Okay. Half face into height was for triangle. For a parabolic spandrel, it is one third. Can we convert this parabolically varying load into an equivalent point load? Yes, can that can be done? And I've already done this. Here it is. It is acting right here. At what distance? Please remember, this is L by four. Here I've mentioned L by four from the right angle corner. From here it is L by 4, it is going to be 3L by 4 from over here. Very simple. How did I reach this result? WL square by 6 EI. The idea is very simple. The area of this spandrel is going to be one third of base. Base is L into height is WL square by 2 EI. So just try to do this math and it is going to give you the result. Okay, WL cube. This is going to be WL cube. Well, let me make this correction over 6 EI. Done. So yes, now let's calculate the shear force. You know, at B, we are considering the left portion. If we are considering the left portion, downward is negative and upward is positive. That's why you took a negative sign. This load is acting in the downward direction. Okay, even here I have done the same area calculation. So you don't have to worry. The answer would be, or slope for the real beam would be minus WLQ upon 6 EI. So please note, let me recapitulate again. Whatever calculation of shear force you do for the <coughs> conjugate beam qualifies as the slope for the real beam. And now let's do the calculation for bending moment of the conjugate beam. Here it is. Very simple. You see, this is the load acting and this is the perpendicular distance from from B. So force is W L cube upon 6 EI. Perpendicular distance is this much that is 3 L over 4. Here we go. Sort of a hogging bending moment because the beam in this case would be acting in this fashion. It is a clear cut case of hogging. Therefore a negative sign you can see this. And do the math. Again, let me reiterate what the bending moment calculation for the conjugate beam will give you the value of deflection for the real beam. These are the calculations. Let me <coughs> show you the real beam again with these final results. And if you make an elastic curve which shows the deflection, this is what they would convey. Again, this negative value of slope indicates have a look. Positive x. If you measure the angle in this direction, that is a positive angle. However, if you measure the angle in this direction, that is a negative angle. So, negative angle signifies the angle has to be measured clockwise, which is clearly visible here. Also, the value of deflection that we obtained is negative. So, had the deflection been positive, we would have weighted in the upper direction. Here, in this case, the deflection is negative. That means downward direction. So from here, it is going downwards. That's it. <coughs> okay. So if you believe that this content has added value to your knowledge of mechanics of solids or theory of structures, do give this video a like, share it with uh, as many friends as you can and subscribe to the channel. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care and have a nice day.